Sagittarius 17, an Easter sunrise service. This is the, the mystery of rebirth. Life can be very grinding, especially a cold, hard winter. And a lot of people moan and complain about how they're suffering. They're suffering poverty or hardship or physical pain. This is more general in conversation than the opposite. And yet we really do forget sometimes what a, a wonderful gift life itself is. We might think that certain things in life are worth celebrating, like success or wealth or relationship. How often do we actually celebrate life itself? And this is the mystery of Easter. It celebrates life. It's a Christian service. It's the ritual of remembering that Christ resurrected, was reborn. Christ died and was reborn. This is the mystery of the, the Easter secret. And Sufis feel the same way about this in a, in a different context. Um, but the whole idea of, of, of being reborn is inherent within the Sufi word Bismillah. This is more immediate. The, the idea of the word Bismillah is I begin again, I begin again, I begin again. Every moment, every breath. You breathe in, you breathe out. And when you breathe out, until you breathe in again, you're dead. The body needs breath. So every time you breathe in is like an Easter, an Easter experience, a resurrection. And this, this sense of dying and being reborn, dying and being reborn, is in the breath. And therefore it's every moment that we're alive, we go th through this process of death and rebirth. And the ceremonial aspect of Easter is an attempt for us to, to bring again consciousness to this, this miracle of life. When we see a baby born, we experience this, the miracle of life. It, it's, it's amazing that something can come from nothing. Um, it happens everywhere, all around us, and it's to be considered for its sacredness. Sacredness cannot endure where cynicism exists. But equally, cynicism cannot endure where sacredness exists. And this is one way for you to choose where to be, with whom to be. It, it doesn't do us any good to be in the presence of cynicism. It's, it's annoying cancer to defeat our faith and optimism. And vivacity, our life joy, is not consistent with cynicism at all. And we have to overcome cynicism by practicing faith. This is particularly poignant in Sagittarius. This is a Sagittarius mystery, and, and Sagittarius can be very cynical sometimes. If they're in the presence of untruth or hypocrisy or unproven statements or whatever, then the, the belligerent kind of mental strength of Sagittarius will attack until such time as truth is revealed. That's their great glory, is to be greatly respected that Sagittarius has that power to determine the truth in the situation. And yet, because of that, they find so very few situations are legitimate, are real, are sacred and celebrated for purity, that they, they, they can lose that sense of faith. Sagittarius is a symbol of faith. 
So if they lose that, that faith, then what's there instead? Well, the opposite, cynicism. And if we don't practice some kind of ritual to, to, to do away with cynicism, then, as I say, it's like a cancer. It can kind of eat away at our faith. We have to renew our choice of faith. Faith is not a gift. It's not an arising. It's a decision. We have to choose it and we have to underline it and re-enact that choice. And the best way to do that is to create a ceremony and to create sacredness. We can create sacredness in our lives, however we choose to do that. There's no rules about this. Certain things are found useful. Lighting candles, burning incense, saying prayers. Yes, that's helpful, but not imperative. Make something in your life sacred and repeat it from day to day, every day, and this will guard against cynicism. Another thing we need to observe about Easter is that it comes but once a year. This underlines the importance of keeping certain things as special. Some of the things we do, like Christmas, for example, we love it because it's filled with kindness and pleasure and family get-togethers and a sense of well-being and, and, and gentleness in, in your social relationships and so on. It's wonderful. And uh, at Easter we have not so much the the um, the worldly aspect of all of that. We might um, go to a church service or enjoy uh, the sense of springtime after a cold winter and, and celebrate a different attitude or aspect of life. But the important thing here, the important point is that we must do that rarely. We can't do special things frequently. By definition, they need to be special. And some of the things we do by way of celebration, let's say, oh, let's celebrate, um, we'll go out and have a meal and have a drink and, and so on. Yeah, lovely. If you do that every Friday night, it's not a celebration anymore. It's something else. So we have to remember that some things in our lives have to be kept, protected from becoming ordinary, becoming habitual. Unless we're to lose specialness, why would we want to lose specialness? And I'm tempted to kind of draw attention to the fact that that has been done over the last 50 years or so in, in the era of sexuality. There was a time when sex was really special, something that you didn't do very often with very many people, maybe just one partner, maybe two or three in a lifetime. Now you would be considered outrageously naive to get married unless you'd had several sexual partners. And if you're single, then it's expected that a sexual relationship can occur in, in many circles. I'm not making a moral point here. I'm just saying that therefore sex is no longer special. And sex should be special. There's nothing like it. Nothing compares to it. It should be kept as special. And if you're promiscuous, then you've just given up the most precious thing in life. It's just silly. Very, very silly. It is just like a total absence of the ability to defer gratification. Oh, I see something I want, I'll have it. I can't see how that can be to anyone's advantage. 